Hello, and here we are with yesterday's show today, because yesterday's show, believe it or not, just as I said we were going to delay our, our show, not even five, I don't think the words were out of my mouth, and we had signed off, and the work arrived from that wonderful company, Canada Post, and here we are now, we are going to be having another unwrapping. Um, and this unwrapping is of the work of Judy Blake. Uh, Judy Blake, as you all know, is a ceramic artist from New Brunswick who taught at the um, New Brunswick College of Art and Design, which I never get right, but it's one of the something like that. And she is now living in Lincoln, New Brunswick with her husband, Rick. And she, I, it's always exciting when Judy's work arrives, particularly if it all arrives in one piece. I don't think we've... Have we ever had a piece arrive broken by Judy? No. No. We've never had a piece arrive broken by Judy. And touch wood, this is not going to be the first time. Okay, and here we go. There are five pieces. And this is really interesting because you're familiar with uh, her... Oh, God, peanuts. There's going to be a mess everywhere, Leave Brian. Eh? When you're up. What? Huh? Pull the, push the sides up like that. Push the sides up. Oh, push the sides up. So when you're opening it... Oh, yeah, so here we are, <laughs> and here we go, and... Shake it a bit. Shake it a bit. Usually this I is, unwrap this things. Is, this is going to be like the Mindy Andrews thing where we can sell the video later, just the audio. Okay, so this is going to be... You, you folks... Go away. Um, one of the things about having kids... Uh, not kids, like that. Jesus, sorry. Not kids, not kids. You know, Brian is an w absolutely wonderful uh, right-hand man, but I wanted to stay behind the camera um, because I've got the spotlight. Okay, so Pull this... It, put the, what? What? Pull what? the package up to the pedestal. Okay. Oh, are, you're talking... Now, <laughs> it's a good idea not to... Oh, now Judy's really good because she put little, little X's here, okay, to let us know where the tape is. That's not because she's sending us kisses, but um, though I'm sure that if she could, she would, and maybe she did, but anyway. So here we are. Once I get the first one open, it's gonna be easier to, you know, this is always a good idea in theory, but why should you, okay. And here we go. Oh, fuck. Uh, that was from that. That last word was not part of the script. Not that this is scripted in any way, shape, or form. You know, God between Ashley Moro's cellophane and Judy's tape, and I don't want to damage the surface. And here we are. Whoa. Um, this one is number five thirty-six. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? Now, folks, here's where I'm going to talk to you. Um, look at this, because this is really, really quite magical. Now, as you will see, there is a directional pull in the surface de decoration. How is that achieved? Well, you may ask, because that's what I had to do. Okay, so this technique, what you do, First, Judy would have thrown a cylinder, okay? Once, <coughs> this is a cylinder. <coughs> so she would throw that cylinder, you got that? Once that cylinder is up and thrown on the wheel, set nicely centered, she would then, right there, which would be right there, make a groove, okay? So the groove goes around the pot and then while that groove is there, she paints on sodium silicate. And the sodium silicate is brushed on, and that, um, that ingredient is now all around the pot, except up here, okay? Then, depending on how much many layers of sodium silicate will depend on how deep the fissures are in the finished thing. So now, remember, this is all on the cylinder. Once that is done, she'll then start 
pushing the pot out. Okay, so when the pot, as the pot, oh no, I skipped a step and I bet Judy was just about to put that little asterisk there saying you missed something because we have a code. Anyway, so then once that sodium silicate is there, she would take a heat gun and with the heat gun, she would dry the sodium silicate. So, and she would know it's dry when the shininess of what she has applied to the pot dulls. Then she knows it's time to go on to the next step. So at that point, Judy would go inside the pot and start pushing out. Now you've got to be really careful as you push out because as you push out, remember, you've got, you're expending this so that it, this is getting thinner and thinner and thinner. The last thing that you want to do is tear the pot because once that sodium silicate is on, you've screwed the clay. What I mean by that is the clay can no longer, like if she was throwing a pot without sodium silicate and then she tears it for whatever reason, she can just bundle up that clay and reuse it. But she can't do that with this. So you really want to be careful because you don't want to waste product and you don't want to waste time and you don't want to do all these things. And somebody's calling me. Just one second, this is, yes, mother. Mom, I'm okay, I'm at work, I'm doing a live video. You are now on video, I will call you later, not to worry. I, I, did, I, left, I didn't want to call you at six o'clock this morning when I left the house. You're at your time. I'm all good, I'll call you later, in an hour, bye. <laughs> That, for anyone listening, was my 94-year-old mother who's out in BC, who if I don't call every morning where she, when I'm supposed to, but I had to be here so I could talk to you guys. Okay, anyway, she's fine. That's a little bit of COVID panic there. Okay, so here we've got this incredible pot now that I was, okay. So now, once that is done, and she's pushed it out, and this all begins to, to crackle. Now, while you're digesting that, we're going to, what number is this? This is number 836. Uh, five, three, six. Okay, so this is the fourth one along. So right there. Aren't you missing something? Yeah, there's a, a yeah, but I'll get to that. There, there are other pieces to this, but uh, we're moving right along. Uh, my dear sainted mother. Okay, that's a COVID thing, you know. She's just totally. She worries about me. Ooh, she worries. Me. Brian's gonna kill me. She's gonna have to. She. Okay. All right. To say nothing of Judy is having a heart attack in New Brunswick. Okay, so here we go. And do you know what I need, Brian? I need a pair of scissors. The knife, the yeah. knife works fine. Okay, all right. So this, so, so remember, so what we've talked about so far, she froze the cylinder, the cylinder is, um, and then depending on the thickness, Brian's searching for her knob. I think it's in the other box. Judy, are they in the one box? Okay, now, here, again, another form, again. So here you've got the same thing. See the decoration, see the swirl. So the pot was turning that way. Okay, because you can tell by the direction. Now, if she was on a Japanese wheel, which goes the other way, the decoration would go the other way. So you could actually technically do a right and a left. This one, the number of this one, is number 535, which is not, let's wait until every, whoa. So I'm gonna move that one there. Okay, now one of the things to remember, so after you've got to that stage that we were talking about, so you've got the sodium silicate on, the pot is now formed, and then you have here, and then you're going to trim. You can see down there, you've got the tri trimming. And with that trimming, you have the burnishing will take place. Now, the burnishing is done with a river stone. So that river stone now makes that very, 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 very smooth. And that's done while it's in the leather hard stage. Okay, so you got that. So now we've got pot number two. Okay, now we're gonna move on to another box. 
box number two has the lids. Box number two has the lids? Well, they're not, boxes aren't numbered. No. Okay, so here we go. And so far I haven't broken anything, which is so nice. Oh, and yeah, this is, okay. So remember, I'm, whoa, this is a biggie. Hmm. Jesus. Okay, and here we are. And this one. Okay, so now what we've got, we've got throw-in cylinders, we've got the Terra, the sodium silicate, which is on the pot, and we've got more damn tape you can shake a stick at which of course is really needed, I suppose. All right. Okay. All right, by the way, we've, this one number 537. Okay, so this one goes there. So look at that wonderful crackleture. So one of the things to remember now, so we've got the cylinder, We've got the burnishing has been done. The burnishing was done in the leather hard stage, okay? Now, once it's bone dry, bone dry is the stage which you are assuming there is no moisture left in the clay because as you all know, if you put the piece in to fire it and there's moisture in it, you're screwed. It just blows up, okay? And it can take out everything in the kiln. And don't think that hasn't happened, because it has. Uh, so now we've got that done. So once it's in the, in the bone hard stage, on top of this burnished surface, you're putting a terra sidge. A terra sidge is essentially the same body. Uh, it has clay particles in it, but it, it's like, uh, oh God, it's, it's like water, but it's got very, 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 very fine particles of clay in it. So that's the terra sidge, okay? Once you've got that terra sidge and you've got that brush on, remember, you've got to be careful because you don't want to get any onto this because it's just going to screw the whole damn thing up. So once the terra sidge is on the bone hard stage, you then take a cloth and with that cloth, you softly burnish. Now, the terra sidge is so fine and so thin that if you haven't done a good job of the initial burnishing with the river stone, then when you apply the terra sidge, any scratches, any mars, they are going to show up. So really what this is, is an exercise in perfection. Because if it is not perfect, and I remember the very first show that I juried, there were pieces that were smoke fired and burnished. And the smoke firing and the burnishing, um, the piece that I actually juried into the show, I said to the people when I was doing, I had to do my critique, I said, just so you know, I would not accept this particular piece to exhibit in the gallery. And the reason is because there are scratches showing. So the person that was burnishing stopped too soon. However, this is not a show uh, that involved professional artists, it was really highly qualified hobbyists who must have, I don't know, got bored or whatever the hell. But anyway, so when you see this, the step, just as when we talked about the Sager firing, the thing about all of that, like the Sager firing is that, you know, it's the times, the time that's expended in actually getting the things to work properly so that you end up with something that is aesthetically pleasing and that is, um, and is expertly done. Because you know, as, I, as we've said here, what we, anyone can learn technique. 
I could slap Tara Sidge on something. I could throw, that is all technique. But then you take that technique and you have the perseverance to make sure that you end up with something that is flawless, that is completely, completely, uh, there's where the artistry comes in. And you know, when you're doing all of this burnishing, which takes, you know, for smoke-fired work, all the burnishing, my God almighty, it just, it's crazy, the amount of time and effort that you have to, now this is a tall box, which means that we either have, the knobs are in here, oh no, there's a pot right at the top, um, which means the knobs, are, if the knobs are in the bottom, Brian, I'm gonna take this one out, move on to the next pot, and then we'll, we'll knob everybody after. Yeah, okay, so here we have another pot. Yeah, so sometimes, you know, when you walk into a place and you're looking at, at a pot, I think I've told all of you the story of one of our top clients. We'll do the lids after, Judy. Yeah, when um, one of our top clients who had been buying all kinds of paintings from me and I was always trying to get them interested in buying ceramic and um, it just wasn't happening. And then one day he came in and I just happened to have a piece by somebody who was hoping to get in and a piece by somebody who was already in. Actually, the piece that was already in was Celia Brandau. And uh, Celia's work exhibits the exact same dedication to the work that, um, that Judy does. Okay, so here, look at that. Okay, this is what number? This is, five, this is the first one. Look at, look at the decoration here. Look at the crispness and the sharpness and the width. Absolutely wonderful. And here, different from these three, you notice here, there's a little bit of, an, of, a, of a depth there. This is just absolutely extraordinary. And this is number 533. But, so again, you know, one of the things about this, because to do this, these pots, is really, really an extraordinary amount of time and dedication. But you know, if you just walk in and it's just sitting there on the shelf and you're walking in and you think, oh my God, there's, you know, there's 50 of these. Judy had done three of these, which we placed in collections. And then because I loved it so much, I asked her to get her finger out and do some more. A year later. A finger later? A year later. A year later. And a year later, uh, she actually did. Um, which just goes to show you, as a matter of fact, speaking of a year later, we had a parcel arrive today from another New Brunswick artist, and Brian has been waiting for this only for five years, but it arrived today. So, you know, in the art world, time is limitless, or rather, everybody thinks it is. So the trick is to never get bent out of shape because things take time. And, and doing this is just absolutely crazy but oh, Judy you know, says two years later two years later yeah and uh, but you know we keep on I didn't even nag Judy I just said when and uh, and she finally got her finger out I mean it's quite remarkable um, by the way her knobs are in the other box but we're gonna first we're uncovering so that we can oh she must have run out of foam chips uh, <laughs> we'll send them back Judy she certainly didn't run out of bubble wrap my God Almighty, could sell this on the open market and pay for a drink. Okay, so here we are with uh, another number. And uh, it's really nice that she puts these little X's on because then I can pretend that she's actually sending me kisses, but oops. I love this technique. And you know, in all, in, in 20 years of, um, of handling a hell of a lot of clay and seeing crackle glazes, there is nothing quite like, I think this is one of the most beautiful ceramic, and there's a reason that you don't see a lot of it, because it's a lot of bloody work. Because remember now, that when you've got that cylinder that you're pushing out, so you're dealing with getting everything right so the precision and everything is really quite extraordinary 
So here we've got five pots utilizing the exact same technique, the technique of throwing the cylinder, applying the, uh, the sodium silicate, burnishing the pot, putting on the, um, uh, the terrace sitch, all of that prior to going into a bisque firing. The bisque firing, as everyone I'm sure knows who's watching this, and if you don't know, uh, now you're going to learn. So the bisque firing is the initial firing. So from the bone hard stage, it goes in, it's fired, and then you've got your bisque firing, and then it comes out, and then the final firing is the raku firing. The raku firing is the one... Now, so with the bisque firing, when those pots are fired, the pots come out of the kiln cold, okay? Now, for the raku firing, the pots come out of the kiln hot. Now, when the pot comes out of the kiln hot, it is then put into combustibles. The combustibles that Judy uses are, are, is our newspaper, but people will often use other kinds of combustibles. I mean, in, in the sagar firing, the combustible that you have there is the straw, and you've got the, the copper to give that you that lovely coloring. So again, you're taking a hot pot and you're putting into something, the combustibles are going psh, and then you have this fabulous, fabulous, the black, the smoke gets absorbed into the thing and you've got this incredible, incredible surfaces. So now you've got all of these magical surfaces and also the, the thing that's just as in, in, um, in Sager firing, all the, the randomness of the colors that apply as a result of the burning through the combustibles. Similarly here, you, you see there are slight variations in the uh, in the shade of, of black uh, there. So it's just really, really quite remarkable. And even though the process is exactly the same, you've got, you know, the different crackling. The crackling here is quite, the fissures are quite deep. This is uh, an indication possibly that she's added more silica than say here, where the fissures are not quite as deep. But also it's, there, it's just really, really remarkable. And now, well, is this the box? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. And now we're going to move on to how the lids look, okay? Because all of these pieces, numbers, and just so we have, believe it or not, they are there in order from numbers 533 through to 537. And now we are going to... And that's how many pots we've sold by Judy. Huh? That's how many pots we've had by Judy. Oh yeah, that's right. Judy is one of these remarkable artists that knows how to count. And so consequently, as when work arrives, all of her work has arrived sequentially. And we have had 537 uh, pieces of work arrive by Judy. And at the moment in the shop, we probably have what, 25, 30? Yeah. 25. We have maybe 25, 30 pots, which means that we've sold a shitload of pots. Uh, that's my oh shit. That's the other. Oh, God, I've done it again. That's, uh, that's, my, that's my private Instagram conversation. We've sold a numerous, uh, innumerable pots. So now we're going to go and we're going to see what Judy's knobs look like. And that will be an interesting thing. And hopefully she has numbered her knob. Because if not, she did. Oh, thank God. Okay. And now we are, it's so nice when the artist is watching but quiet. Okay. And here we've got, and here we've got, just a second. Here we've got the first one. Now, here are, now remember, J Judy's aesthetic is very, very strong. She's got a wonderful aesthetic so that when she, um, does her hand or her lids, she really wants it to fit the form. And so now this one is going on pot number 36, which is right here. And what's really interesting here, you see here right up here, there's that little, little kiss of the kiln where there's just that little tiny bit of white, which you're going to now totally lose. Okay, so here is and now remember, again, the same thing here. Remember, this has to, whoa, ah, my hair. Um, this ha has been burnished, and then in the bone heart stage, it's got the terrasage, and then it's smoke fired. And then the technique that she uses to get this, she has obviously used something to impress. 
Um, I'm going to leave the impression of how she does that totally up to her because every artist is going to have a little bit of a secret. And, and I do know, just in case you think I don't know. Okay, so that wasn't, that wasn't me fudging. Oh, whoa. Okay, and here we've got yet another knob, and we'll see who's next. But these, they, these pots really are remarkable, and, um, and I love this technique. Actually, one of the ones that we sold, there was a professor in from, um, from Toronto because we had a reception for, we do all kinds of crap here, uh, but this wasn't crap actually, I shouldn't say that, but there was, um, there was a tea festival in town, and um, the reception for all the tea people was here, and there was a, can you imagine this guy at, at the University of Toronto, and he teaches about tea. So here we've got the lid to number 587. Now, just so in case anybody's curious, this piece and this piece are separate. And you can see because in here is the manner in which she has attached them. Either that or she's just stuck one of her old pearls there. But there you go. And again, beautiful, wonderful uh, twist. Um, and there. So there we have two. And now we will move on to... Now this one, because this is the last box, I'm assuming that the last three knobs are in here. Otherwise, we have a problem. Okay, so... You know, it's so exciting to be able to share this with everyone, and it will be equally exciting once I get all of these through, that when somebody says, that's the one I want! You know, when we did the one on, the little thingy on, um, on Saturday, with Ashley Morrow's wonderfully uh, executed, um, oh, here we go. Do two of them not have vessels? Have, don't they all have stoppers? They all have stoppers. I wonder where the hell the others are. Oh my God. We have never had one like this before. This is really, really amazing. Beautifully, beautifully burnished. But this is the first time that we've had uh, a hole. Uh, and this one is number, I'm assuming it's this one because those holes are too small. There's two domed lids in the tall box, she thinks. Okay, so this is where we are now going to, in the tall box, that's this one. Yeah. Nope. This one. In there? Okay. Oh, here's one. Okay, so we have. Okay, so we've got our other knobs. Um, <laughs> oh, 535 is sold. Oh! Now there's be, somebody. There's a. It's going to BC. This is going to BC. Now, how's that for. Quickly. And where in BC do we know? Victoria. This is go off to Victoria. Uh, so. We will be packing that up and it will be zipping away um, tomorrow. But right now, so that's somebody who as soon as they heard, oh my God, that's the only handle like that. So let me see. Um, do you know, ooh, Jesus Christ. Oh, hello. <laughs> she likes uh, her tape. Eh? She likes her tape. Yeah, she likes her tape all right. Um. Oh, look at that. Did a little knob. And this one? That would be the end one. I would think the end one. There, look at that. My gorgeous Diane. That is just absolutely awesome. Absolutely, you know, these are so elegant. And you know what I find? There's a certain, 
I don't know if it's just the, I mean, there's so much time and that goes into doing one of these, but the, um, what's really cool is not just the time that goes into it. There's almost like a zen-like feeling to them. They're so peaceful, um, very, very elegant. And uh, by the way, I wore the red shirt today because I knew that I was going to be dealing with black and I was going to be against the blue. So, and here, slightly bigger knob. And that one goes in there. So there we have five, Judy Blake, five vessels, each with their, with their, um, their top. Uh, this one, the first time we've ever had a top like that, which is really cool. And I guess we're gonna be able to look at it for a day, Brian, because that's off tomorrow to BC. So anyway, again, just for, just for a quick roundup, um, cylinder, groove, uh, sodium silicate, expand, leather hard, burnish, bone hard, terracage, uh, polish with soft cloth, bisque firing, bisque firing to raku firing to combustible, coming out of the kiln when it's bisque cold, coming out of the raku kiln hot, and there you have five extraordinary vessels by an extraordinarily talented artist. Now, one of the things to remember, when we were talking about sagger firing, and when we were talking about, there are certain techniques that though a ceramic person may try the technique, that doesn't mean that they get it right. Because sometimes, you know, when you, you don't think that when Judy has, that every single piece turned out perfectly. Sometimes in doing it and in enthusiasm, she could have very easily have, uh, have torn the body of the work and then that whole, all that time, clay and everything is just totally pooched. So, but here, you know, to get levels of excellence like this, you have to persevere. And so when you have somebody whose career has taken them from functional to sculptural, um, you really have to, who's continually challenged yourself, and here you've got a fabulous, fabulous pieces. The, uh, the subtlety also of the smoke firing from, and the, um, the intricacy of the handles, everything works. When you look at these, these tops, they go well with the, uh, with the vessel. There's just that slight indentation from the, uh, where the groove, the slight indentation, it's ju they're just absolutely exquisite. And uh, number 835 is on its way to BC. We will be happy to repack, not this minute. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much. It's been wonderful. Our next video is when? Tuesday. Our next video is next Tuesday, where we will be talking about something else. But until then, mwah!